Okay, here we are. We're going to have the demonstration for scanning individual 35 millimeter negatives with the um, cool scan made by Nikon using the Silverfast software program. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to our dock and we're going to open the Silverfast 8 software program that's indicated by this eye um, with a rainbow around it. Um, when you click on the Silverfast Eight software program. Uh, the first thing you want to check and make sure is that the scanner is attached to the computer that we're using. We will know that by the image source drop down menu here. And if we see Nikon and then the LS50 and then USB, that means that our um, scanner is connected by USB to our computer. Once we see that there in that drop down menu, we're going to hit the start button. Now, oftentimes when you start the Silverfast software program, um, it will go into a movie mode in which a movie will pop up and it'll start playing. In order to stop that movie from playing, just hit the escape button. So the escape button will stop the movie from playing. Then we are going to take our negative and we're going to find the frame that we want to scan. And then we're going to load the negative into the scanner with the dull side or the emulsion side facing up. Now when loading strips of negatives, we want to make sure that there's at least three frames. Um, if we have fewer than three frames, we will bring those negatives to um, myself and I'll show you how to scan using a different scanner. Once the negatives are loaded into the scanner um, and the program is open, we're going to look and we're not going to worry about a lot of the different settings that we see here. Um, a lot of this stuff we're going to turn off and we're really going to be only concerned with a few um, very specific settings. Um, here on the screen I'm working from a laptop so I can't actually see how to get the overview of the negatives on the screen here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down into the vertical tool palette here. I'm going to go down to the bottom and there's these two little arrows and if I click on those I will get a couple of other options. This is how we actually eject the film from the scanner and then also make an overview scan of all the different thumbnails um, and frames in our negative strip. So I clicked overview here and I'm going to wait for the thumbnails to be generated. Now oftentimes when they are generated the scan software doesn't do a great job of lining the frames up within each individual frame and you'll see you get half frames that are cut like this. Um, so the image that I'm going to actually scan I know is the third frame in so I'm going to move to the third and it's the guy with the dog picture that we've worked with um, in the workflow before. So now in order to get this to actually be fully in the frame I need to go down and there's a couple of arrows underneath the frame and if I click on the right arrow and I keep clicking and I'm, I'm not holding it down it won't it won't move if I hold it down so I just have to keep clicking until the entire frame fits within that thumbnail window. Once it's there, um, I'm going to go through and I'm going to turn off all the other frames. Now, because we're making a high resolution scan, we can only scan one image in at a time. Before we hit OK, what we're going to actually do is add a selection. This will help ensure that we um, have the right image and it will do a preview scan of that image and it will make sure that it's aligned properly. So I'm going to hit Add Selection. And the scanner will now go into a mode of doing a preliminary scan. We can see the pre-scan down here in the lower left-hand corner. It will auto-focus and um, quickly go through and at a lower resolution make a scan. Now this isn't our high resolution scan yet. Um, we will set those settings in just a minute. I'm going to move this dialog box off to the side. We don't actually don't even really need to see this. I'm going to close out of it. And so now we see the preliminary scan of the guy with the dog picture. The one thing I notice is because the emulsion side is up is that it's flipped. So in Photoshop, we'll have to flip this after, make sure it's the proper orientation. Um, so now the first thing, and usually with these scan softwares, you want to go in a specific order or else it will, um, sometimes settings will get reset. So actually the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the marquee out and I'm going to drag it outside of the entire image and I will crop the rest of it later and make a more sophisticated crop in Photoshop. Then I'm going to just go to, through the series of um, tools to sort of set light and dark, turn off sharpening, um, and make sure that overall I will have good detail in the negative um, in both shadow and highlight, and then just hit scan. Now we scan our negatives in um, 
that they are still negative and then we invert in Photoshop. The a little it's a little deceptive here, but what we're gonna want here is where in the second button from the left it says positive. We're gonna want it to say positive even though it's actually scanning in as a negative. Um, I've learned that if you choose the negative instead, it actually clips the image automatically and you will lose some um, detail in the highlight and shadow. And we have much more control in Photoshop if we scan this in using the positive setting here, even though it's scanning in as a negative. Next to that, the button second from um, the right, you'll see a palm tree here. And this is just the bit depth of the actual image. Now, I think I mentioned earlier that really you should only be selecting um, one or two options, either this 48 to 24 bit or the 48 bit. If you're working in color with color film, 48 bit will give us a bigger bit depth and it will give us more pixels to work with um, in terms, or sorry, more bits to work with and more that we can beat up our image in Photoshop. For the black and white photographs, the 48 to 24 bit is fine. Um, frame, we're not going to worry about that. Then we're going to just go through a couple of different settings here. The first is the scan dimension, and this is where we will actually set our resolution and then also the um, area which we will name our image. Um, we'll send it somewhere to our raw scan folder. We'll also set the um, file format from TIFF. We're going to actually choose PSD. Um, so first I'm going to type in the name. So um, like everything else, we're going to go with our last name, then first, then the assignment number. I'm leaving spaces between. You don't longer need to leave um, underscores. And then I'm going to name it something so that I can identify what picture it is. I'm going to just call it um, Guy Dog. And then after that, raw for the raw scan, so that I know that is the scan file. After that, I'm going to change the file um, format from TIFF to PSD, which is a Photoshop document. And then the path, I'm going to click here. Now, one thing I've found is that sometimes if you type in the path, it doesn't work properly. So I'm going to click on the actual folder and I'm going to locate my raw scan folder. Here it appears in the drop down menu. If, it, if you don't see it, um, go to your hard drive or your thumb drive. Here, if I go to the desktop, I will find my name folder. And then I will find the raw scans folder. And then I open it, and that's where that file will be sent to. Now, sometimes there's some problems here in setting the resolution. Um, for the purposes of this class, if you set your resolution at 4800, that will give us a big enough file to ensure that we have um, enough space to do a little bit of a crop and then print it at 8 by 10. Um, typically, what I will always do is scan it at the highest resolution if I can, if I have enough um, file storage. But for this class, 4800 is fine. Um, after that's all set, I'm going to close out of that drop down menu there, that menu. And I'm going to go over to the histogram. And I'm going to click on the histogram. And here we will see, similar to our levels in Photoshop, we have a histogram. We also have a black point on the left hand side, a white point on the right. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to move those close to the edge of the histogram without going inside the histogram. <coughs> and that's to ensure that I don't clip. Um, before I do anything else, I'm going to go down and I'm going to click on the cap and gown cap here. That's for an expert mode. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the sliders over on the bottom to 5 and 250 for the highlight. You'll see here it's set 5 here, 5 here, 250, 250. If for some reason there are different numbers, you can go ahead into those fields and just change those all um, on the left-hand side, so they're 5, and then on the right-hand side, so they're 250. Once that's done, I'm going to look at the overall image, and I'm going to say, okay, what looks good in terms of light-dark? And generally speaking, it's always better to scan your image in a little bit flat and a little bit um, light. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, bring down the file a little bit. I'm going to make sure that I can see detail in both the, what will render as the brightest highlight and then also the darkest shadow. I think that looks pretty good. The rest of the adjustment we'll do in Photoshop. Once that's done, I'll close out of the histogram by clicking that triangle. And then I'm going to go to this thing called Unsharp Mask. Now, what I've learned recently is that if you just hit X here, it will turn off all the, the sharpening. Um, if you want to check, if you turn it back on, you'll see all of a sudden some sharpening appears. 
um, just make sure that these numbers are all the way down as far as they go um, or hit the letter X or X here and it will turn off the sharpening. I'm a little paranoid so I just go through and do it manually. Um, and then I click out of that unsharp mask menu. Then all I'm going to do is go not worry about anything else here. I'm going to go over to the scan button up here in the upper right hand side and then hit start scan and then we'll see down in the lower left hand corner it will tell us the progress of the scan um, and you'll hear the scanner start up and then it will count down or count up the percentage um, once it gets to 100 it still takes a minute to actually finish the scan to interpolate the information and write the file um, it really only takes about maybe a minute or two before your full scan is done so we'll wait for that to happen And you'll see a preview here in the window. And now we are done. You'll see it's processing. So now it's writing the actual file. So it's scanned the information. Now it's being written by the program. And then it's going to be saved into that folder. And that takes just about a minute or so. And then once that's done, saving now, and it says finished, and now we know it's done. Now, if I know that I'd, I'm gonna scan another image off of this specific strip, I would go back through the overview and then um, 